Today we are going to be unhauling books, which, you know, is a, a beautiful part of the ebb and flow of a book collection. As things come in, inevitably some things have to go out unless you are actually living in the Beauty and the Beast castle and have a gigantic library that has an infinite amount of space. So I find this very cathartic and I always check in with you guys before. I'm going to be doing a run to the used bookstore, which I will be here shortly because I have a day off. So I'm gonna run to my pals at McKay's and drop off some books. So I thought I would share with you guys what I am taking. Excitingly, pretty much all of these are books that I've read. So proud. And I think some of this is a function of I'm finally getting to a point in my book collection where the books that I have that I've not yet read, for the most part, are ones that I have required recently enough that they are fresh. So like, I think I finally like, I've either read or let go of a lot of the books that were kind of in the in-between space of where my book taste was versus where it currently is. Uh, there's some exceptions to that, but for the most part, I think that we're getting very close to having a very fresh, up-to-date collection, and therefore most of what I take to the used bookstore ends up being things that I've read or things that I've realized I'm not gonna like based on what I've read. Loving that journey for me. Uh, so let's dive on in. I've divided these into hardback, red, soft paperback, red, soft paperback DNFs, and hardback DNFs as well as things that I'm not going to read just straight up. So let's get going here. So first of all, you know, if you know, you know. The Outsider by Stephen King. Our pal Uncle Stevie is gonna show up a few times in this video. And if you saw my collaboration video I did about reading the winners of the Goodreads Choice Awards for the last 10 years in the mystery thriller category, you know why this has to go. I do wanna give people a warning or a heads up that this is not, strictly speaking, a standalone. If you have any interest in reading the Bill Hodges series, do not read this until you have read the Bill Hodges series because it spoils what happens in that entire trilogy. So, goodbye. Lore Olympus. I know, I know, a little surprising this one, I think, because this has been so popular. I thought that this was fine. Like the art, honestly, is probably my favorite part. I really enjoyed the art in this one. The story was okay. I wonder if this has just been so hyped up that I just didn't click with it as much as I thought I might. But, you know, I'm not mad that I tried it because it's, like I said, it's been really hyped. So at least I understand what the hype is about now. And I think I gave this three stars. It's solid, but just not super compelling to me. So I'm going to pass it along since it is so popular. And this is a nice, like, very fresh edition since I'm so tender with my books. <laughs> Someone else can get some good use out of this. Oh well, yeah, another graphic novel, Seek You, A Journey Through American Loneliness by Kristen Radke. I gave this three and a half stars and I think that this is really good. Like it's, I think, a solid enough exploration of the title that it gives. I also appreciate that it doesn't just sort of like blame loneliness on social media, which is I feel like a very think PC in the Atlantic kind of move to do. So I appreciate that there was more nuance to it. I just haven't found myself like thinking about it or wanting to refer to it. So for that reason, I feel like it can move along. The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. This, oh, I should, I wanna hold on to the little promo material. Uh, but this was one that I put in my Unwrapped project and I read it and it was fine. I gave it three stars. I thought it, for what it was, it's not necessarily my trope combo because it's definitely a domestic suspense, but it's a reinterpretation of Jane Eyre and I really enjoyed those interpretation elements, but not enough to make me love the kind of book it is. I think Rachel Hawkins is a really solid thriller, mystery, suspense -y kind of writer. I've enjoyed everything I've read from her so far. I've read two books and would read more. Um, not as a favorite, but just as like solid, good, enjoyable. But I'm gonna move it along because I don't tend to hold on to thrillers that I'm not especially enamored with. Boy, speaking of not enamored with a thriller, the last thing he told me 
by Laura Dave. I think that this just got turned into a movie or a TV show. I do not understand why. <laughs> this was just meh. Very meh. Very blah. Very bland. It was okay. Yeah, it was okay. I, it doesn't need to stay with me though. And I would not have read this were it not for that project of reading the Goodreads Choice Award winners. You know, it's one of the many ones in that project that made me rethink my choices in life. The Bodyguard by Katherine Sinner. This one I think is like solidly fine. I think the writing in this is particularly nice. I just don't think that this is memorable. I only read this a couple months ago and I'm struggling to remember much about it and uh, therefore I don't feel like it belongs in my permanent collection. When I'm Gone, Look for Me in the East by Quan Berry. I picked this one up from one of my local bookstores because I was enamored of the cover and because I have read and enjoyed something else from this author in the past, which was We Ride Upon Sticks. That I loved. Great book. I gave it four stars at the time, but really should go back and give it four and a half. This one I think is good. It's a solid lit thick book about travel and religion and Mongolia and all the, those kind of things. Because Quan Berry is a poet, the writing is especially nice. Uh, I just, again, not one that I feel needs to have a permanent place in my collection. Blitz by Daniel O'Malley is so chonky. It's just so big. I think if I had held on to my original copies of The Rook and Stiletto, I would feel more compelled to hold on to this because, you know, having the matching set. But yeah, it's just so, it's so big. And I only gave this three stars. And I think this is probably my least favorite of the series so far, even though it was fine. So I just think it can go. Bye bye. Go Set a Watchman by Harper Lee. I picked this up, um, not when it first came out, but it was a little more in the news. And then I read it, I know I read it while I had a booktube channel, though I don't remember exactly when. And I think that this is an interesting thought experiment. And, an, and a, I'm glad this is in the world to complicate people's perception of the character of Atticus because I think it needed to be complicated from sort of some of the white savior interpretations of that. Um, but this should not have been a book. This should have been generously a novella or short story. It also feels exploitative because of the situation vis-a-vis -vis Harper Lee's mental competence at the time. So I don't know. I, it's not a great work of literature, uh, so I don't feel like it's, I don't know. I just don't know why I'm holding on to it basically. And I need the shelf space. So I decided it was finally time to just let it go. And then the last of the hardbacks I've finished is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. I, th I think I have a controversial opinion in that I, I think I gave this a three star. This is all vibes. And I thought that the vibes were pretty effective, but I needed something more to love this. I held on to it for a long time because I wanted, well, A, it feels like a momentum from the pandemic because I hosted a virtual panel with the author on it at the beginning of the pandemic. So love that. And then, I don't know, I kept expecting to reference this more on the channel, like make more recommendations based on this, and I just never have really ended up doing that. So yeah, it's fine. Not my favorite. I'm gonna move it along. Oh, okay. And then moving on to our paperback, ones I've finished but I'm unhauling. These all are the remainder, I think, of the ones that I have from that Goodreads Choice Award project. I have two Paula Hawkins. Paula Hawkins is just not an author for me. And I'm just gonna leave that there. And then we're unhauling the entire Bill Hodges series. And I feel blessed that I will never have to read about the character of Jerome again, because I found it deeply distasteful. And these are just not, I don't know, End of Watch is definitely the most successful of these, which is the last one, because I think it gets back to Stephen King doing what I think he does better than an attempt at a mystery thriller. <sighs> but none of it's good. And I am nervous because I believe there's another book with Holly in it called Holly coming out this year. And if that gets nominated, I'm gonna be real sad that I have to read it because I don't wanna read about these characters anymore. Okay, anyway, I'm unhauling these. Uh, then I found, I decided I was gonna get rid of the second two books in the Heartstone trilogy by L. Catherine White because they're fine, but I need the shelf space and I don't know. I think if you love the original book, Heartstone, which I absolutely love and widely recommend, these are worth 
reading to continue on. But if you didn't love that book, don't keep going because the first book is definitely the strongest. And these are just fine. Like I think I gave Dragon Shadow three and a half, Flamebringer three. So, you know, they're fine. But again, I need the space on the shelf and I don't need these. <sighs> Verity by Colleen Hoover. Look, I did a whole video about this. If you know, you know, this was not a book for me. I went in with some optimism and that optimism was quickly squashed. So you can go check out that video for my full thoughts. Uh, and then another one I held on to for a long time because of like pandemic nostalgia, because I took this sponsored video at the very beginning of the pandemic. See, on sale 52620. Um, this is very reminiscent of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society in terms of a historical set in the World War II era that has a certain amount of kind of communal vibes, like coziness, social cohesion, this time around like preserving Jane Austen stuff. And uh, yeah, I recommend this, but it just, again, I needed the space and the only thing I was holding on to this was nostalgia. So I figure it's time to let that go. Okay, and then most of my paperback DNFs, I just realized are related to my unwrapped project slash like trying to get things off my TBR that have been on there for a long time, as we were discussing at the beginning of the video. So the one that is not included in that is The Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez. I picked this up because my friend Angela, whose recommendations normally are very strong hits for me. This one was not to my taste. I Not because it's bad, I just don't have enough brain cells I'm willing to dedicate to figuring out what's going on. So I got like 40 pages in and was like, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> And I don't want to go back and reread. And uh, there's some really smart people who get this and I'm just not one of them. So there we go. My Kind of Earl by Vivian Lorette. Fine, but not memorable historical romance. And I just realized I wasn't invested in this quasi Pygmalion kind of story. So yeah, I just DNF'd it. Two books that I think I would have liked better if I had read them around the time that I pick them up. It's just another lesson in trying to read books more quickly. One is The Supper of the Lamb, A Culinary Reflection um, by Robert Ferrer Campon. And this is sort of a theology via food. The writing, I think if you were into that project, is very nice. It is in the modern, what is it, the modern library food series uh, edited by Ruth Reichel. So I mean, I think that this is not a bad book. I just, it wasn't clicking with me. So if I'd read it when I bought it, I might have gotten into it more, but as things stand, not so much. And then Talking Taboo, American Christian Women Get Frank About Faith. Again, if I had read this when I bought it, I think I would have been much more into it. This was something I bought right when I was like in the middle of deconstructing and looking for a way to be a progressive Christian slash evangelical, and that's just not where I'm at. It just didn't click. This has been on my, this was one of the oldest books on my TBR, which is why I was trying to read it. And uh, yeah, just not for me at this point in my life. Uh, and then The Bookish Life of Nina Hill by Abby Waxman. I was expecting a romance because it does have like a specific call out for there to be a strong romantic component on the back. And we were like, I think almost 100 pages in and he had, I don't, I'm not even sure if he had shown up yet. And so I was, that's what I was wanting. And that's just not what this book is. So I really recommend this if you are more into women's fiction or like what was called women's fiction than I am, because I think the writing is really nice. Um, if you're looking for maybe just sort of like lighthearted general fiction, I would recommend this. It just wasn't what I was looking for. Okay, and then the last group of DNFs are my hardback. So The Morning Star by Carl Ove Nausgaard. I'm DNFing this because it's so long, it's almost 700 pages, and I found out that it's kind of the beginning of a series, and I'm just not gonna commit to doing that. This is a literary magical realism-y kind of story. The writing was very nice. I have no, like, no problems with this other than I just wasn't invested enough to continue for another like 600 pages. The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. I wonder if I would have done, had a better time with if I had done, gone the audio route for this rather than physical. I really like John Green as an entity, but I just am finding that his writing does not work for me. So I DNF'd it, but plenty of other people love this. So 
don't take my word for it. And then home, I DNF'd because I just realized that I wanted Gilead to be a standalone. So this is just not, this isn't something that I want more books in the world of it, which I did not know until I started reading this. So there you go. You can see I got it from McKay's, so I will take it back to McKay's. And then finally, Life in Code, A Personal History of Technology by Ellen Ullman. This one is really well written. It's a very literary memoir, definitely worth seeking out. I just realized once I started reading it of like, oh God, this feels like I'm at work, kind of. And I just didn't want to feel like I was at work. <laughs> So for me, this didn't end up being what I wanted, but I think this is super well done. So if you're interested in sort of a woman's perspective on the, you know, industry of software development as it was flourishing in its early days, I recommend this for that. And then finally, four books that I'm just unhauling, taking them off my TBR without having read them, most of which are a result of the things we've already talked about. So Lila is another book in the Gilead series. And when I realized that I wasn't wanting a series from Gilead, I realized that this should also leave my TBR. So we're doing that. And then in the course of my Stephen King project, when I was reading the Goodreads Choice Award winners, I realized I just don't think I read and really my favorite Stephen King actually was 11 63. But it seems to me like his quality since then has been highly questionable. And uh, most of the readers of Stephen King in my comments validated that like, yes, if you want to read more, maybe just stick to the classics. So I'm unhauling two more recent releases from him. One is the Institute and one is The Bazaar of Bad Dreams. This one I'm a little more hesitant about because it's short stories, but I'm just, you know what? I'm, like I said, I'm probably gonna have to read Holly by him. So that is enough modern Stephen King, I think. If I read more from him, I'm gonna stick to the classics. And then last, a random church history book that I found that I was like, eh, I don't need this. Light in Their Dark Darkness, The Evangelical Mission to the Working, to Working Class London, mid 1800s. I'm just not gonna read this, so. And that, my friends, I think is my unhaul. It's a lot of books, actually, now that we're looking at it. Uh, but it feels good. And hopefully I'll make a little pretty penny at McKay's. But, and we can start this process all over again as I find new things to unhaul. So uh, let me know what you thought about any of the books that I talked about. I am always delighted when people enjoy books more than I do because yeah, like not every book is for every reader and vice versa. So I'm glad when books find their, their intended audience, even if it's not me. Hopefully other people will enjoy these once I put them back into circulation. Uh, so yeah, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you are having an absolutely lovely day today. And I will just talk to you soon. Bye!